God, who in creating the human race will that man and wife should be one, join we pray in the bond of inseparable love, these, your servants, who are to be united in the covenant of marriage, so that as you make their love fruitful, they may become, by your grace, witnesses to love itself. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your risen Son. He who lives and reigns with you, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, holy and mighty God, forever and ever. Amen. See you. A reading from the Song of Songs. I hear my beloved, see how he comes, leaping on the mountains, bounding over the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle, like a young stag. See where he stands behind our wall. He looks in at the window. He peers through the lattice. My beloved lifts up his voice. He says to me, come then, my love, my lovely one, come. My dove, hiding in the clefts of the rock, in the coverts of the cliff, show me your face. Let me hear your voice, for your voice is sweet, and your face is beautiful. My beloved is mine. And I am his. He said to me, Set me like a seal on your heart, like a seal on your arm. For love is strong as death, jealousy relentless as shale. The flash of it is a flash of fire, the flame of the Lord himself. Love no flood can quench, no torrent drown. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, 
was safe to be on. Think about that for a second. Willing the good of the other for the sake of the other. So it's not something that has to go on a period after that. I have to convince myself that I, I love it or I love it. I have to, well, it's not something down here where you just have to try really hard. It's something that the whole person's being does. Body, mind, soul, every part of you. Where you will the good of the other person. And for their sake. Because it is possible to will the good of another for your sake. That's possible. You can have that little bit of an ego trick where you, you know, I'm doing this, but I scratch your back, you scratch my back. But love is willing the good of the other for the sake of the other. And that's, there's an element there of something that we are almost afraid to talk about. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. We're a little bit afraid, especially in our culture. Our culture that is so into consumerism, our culture that is so into media gratification. We're afraid to talk about sacrifice. But really, truly, love is sacrificial. If you think about it, if it is willing the good of the other, for the sake of the other, that means I have to give up something. I have to give up what I want. I have to be willing to give up what I want. That's the key. Let me ask you something. You guys are in love. It's so clear. It's so obvious. Is there anything that you wouldn't do for this moment in time? Is there anything that you wouldn't do? I bet you, even to the point of giving up for you. I really, truly, eh? No, you hope you don't have to. I hope you don't have to. But the point is, is that you would think about it. You would consider it, wouldn't you? You would consider it. You would consider sacrifice. Everything. In a sense, that's what you guys are doing right now. You are doing that right now. Of all the possibilities for the lives that you guys can have led, you choose this now. You choose each other now. You choose him for his sake. And you choose her for her sake. Which means now, from now on, you are necessary for her salvation. And she is necessary for your salvation. What makes this possible? Because that sounds like a big task, isn't it? It almost sounds too big. Well, what makes it possible is who you're inviting into this relationship. The one who showed us what sacrifice is all about. It, that can look like a suddenly thought across the table. That can look like a really difficult thing to sort of swallow. But what it is, is he showed us what it is to choose for the sake of the other. That's really what that was all about. It's the ultimate sacrifice. And like you said, hopefully, no one, and hopefully I will never have to be the ultimate sacrifice. But it's willing the good of the other for the sake of the other. That's what he showed us. And then when he says, live on in my love, that's what he's talking about. And that's what Paul was talking about. In that beautiful section of the reading that you guys wanted me to proclaim, this idea that faith, hope, and love, all these things endure. I mean, that really is at the heart of our human existence. Having faith, you guys in each other. Hope, hope in a bright future. And love, which you guys are, are living, you're living it out right now, you're incarnating it so the rest of us can see it. And yet Paul says, of all these three things, only one of them lasts forever. Because in the end, faith, trust in God, we will see God face to face. Hope, at one point, we won't need hope anymore. But love, that's forever. St. John would be the best. God is love. God is that sacrificial, willing the good of the other for the sake of the other. I mean, that's what God did in creating all this. Does God need anything? No. God needs nothing. God is God. He's not like us. He's totally other than us. But in this amazing giving of self, the Father giving to the Son, the Son looking back at the Father, and giving back to the Father. And between the two of them, this breath that is another person, yet yeah, the Spirit, you know, the sigh between the two of them, the sigh of love, that's still over. That's still over. That created everything you and I see around each other. That's why you and I are all hardwired for love. Every one of us. You see it in children. The kids know all about it already. We're hardwired. There's nothing else that will make us happy. There's nothing else that will fulfill us. You two account in each other. And that is probably the most important sign of all. That's why, you know, could you get married privately in a 
woods somewhere, you want a canoe or a river or whatever. Yeah, you could. But what would be lost? It would be lost to us. To see, to be reminded by the two of you, this is what we're making. This is what we're hardwired for. This is the only thing that will make us happy. Willing to do the other for the sake of the other. Do that. Do I do that? Everything else is possible, isn't it? So, with that being said, let's move on to the probably the most important part of this. Last, the two of you, please stand. My friends, you've come here together in this church that the Lord may seal and strengthen your love in the presence of the church's ministry and of this community. Christ abundantly blesses your love. He's already consecrated you both in baptism, and now he enriches you and strengthens you by this very special sacrament, so that the two of you may assume the duties of marriage in mutual and in lasting fidelity. And so, in the presence of the church, I ask you both to state your attention. Christopher, Chelsea, have you both come here freely and without reservation to give yourselves to each other in marriage? Yes. Will you love and honor each other as husband and wife for the rest of your lives? Yes. Will you accept children lovingly from God and bring them up according to the law of Christ and of His church? Yes. Since it's your intention to enter into marriage, join your hands together and declare your consent before God and His church. declare your consent before the church. May the Lord in his goodness strengthen your consent and fill you both with his blessings. But God has joined. No one may divide. Young man, may I have the rings, please? Chelsea, take this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
being very delicate because he doesn't want to hurt her. <laughs> Considerably bigger. Yes. Well, the two of you are now married. You can beckon the sacrament between the two of you. So I suggest that it would be good, and I think the whole assembly would love to see you uh, kiss each other. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for your goodness. You receive the bread we offer you. Through the earth, through the human hands, you will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to be pleased with us in the sacrifice that we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquities as we all have sinned. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Please stand. Receive, we pray, the Lord. The offering made on the occasion of this sealing of the sacred bond of marriage. And just as your goodness in its origin, may your providence guide its course through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts and lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in Him you have made a new covenant with your people, so that as you have redeemed man and woman by the mystery of Christ's death and resurrection, so in Christ you might make them partakers of divine nature, and joined heirs with him of heavenly glory. In union of husband and wife, you give a sign of Christ's loving gift of grace, so that the sacrament we celebrate might draw us back more deeply into the wondrous design of your love. And so with the angels and all the saints, we praise you, and without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, 
by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you tell us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Albert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. And we remember especially the members of both our families here, those who cannot be with us, who have gone through their eternal rest. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her husband, with the Blessed Apostles and Glorious Martyrs, Saint Bernadette of Lourdes, and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, that we too may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you for your Son, Jesus Christ. Throw him with him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever.
prepare for their children to become members of your heavenly household by raising them also in the way of the gospel, as their parents did for them. Graciously crowned with your blessings, your daughter Chelsea, so that by being a wife and mother, she may bring warmth to her home with a love that is pure and adorn it with welcoming graciousness. Bestow a heavenly blessing also, Lord, on Christopher, your servant, that he may be a worthy, good, and faithful husband and provident father. Grant, Holy Father, that desiring to approach your table as a couple joined in marriage in your presence, they may one day have the joy of taking part in your great banquet in heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. You graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. You live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My friends, peace of the Lord be with you always. Now, those of you who are close to each other, you may offer each other a sign of peace in any which way. Otherwise, please offer a sign of peace to each other with a bow. take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father, the work of the Holy Spirit, through your death, gave life to this world. Free me by this, your most holy body, of love from all my sins and every evil, and you always faithful to command us. Never let me be part of Behold, the Lamb of God, Word made flesh, splendor of the Father, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only to say the word, and my soul shall be. For communion, those of you who are in the habit of receiving uh, the Eucharist, I uh, ask you to remain standing. Anybody else who would like to simply be seated. And once you've received, simply be seated, then I'll know who hasn't received it, okay? Okay. Oh. Great. I'm going to come to you. Just so you know, there's no deception.
not a sin. Let us pray. Having been made partakers at your table, we pray, O Lord, that those who are united by the sacrament of marriage may always hold fast to you and proclaim your name and your love to all the world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So, thank you, Lord. Please be seated, because we would like to make this official for the promise of Manitoba. If you join me over at the table where the license is, you're right with you. We need the witnesses as well, please. Honey, stand this the song blessing. The Lord be with you. May God, the eternal Father, keep you both of one heart and love for one another. May that peace of Christ dwell in you and abide always in your home. Amen. May you be blessed in your children, have solace in your friends, and enjoy true peace with everyone. Amen. May you be witnesses in the world of God's charity, His love, so that the afflicted and the needy who have known your kindness may one day receive you, thank you, into the eternal body of God. Amen. And now, Holy God bless you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I almost made it. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an enormous pleasure to introduce to you Mr. and Mrs. Christopher and Chelsea Gurley. 